This looks amazing. It's a little on the painterly side, but honestly, it's close. Only weird thing. That sandwich is comically huge. This is happening faster than, honestly, I don't even know. It's just fast. Welcome back to Sneaky Robot. A few days ago, we were looking at Flux Context. And now we've already got a new image editing contender that might have just knocked it off the throne. Or did it? Today I'm testing Hydream E1.1 to see if it's actually better than Flux Context like it claims. And to keep things fair, I'm using the exact same images. So before we jump in, we need to go over a few key differences when prompting with the new High Dream image editing model. First, prompting works differently. You need to use clear, direct, and natural language instructions. Full sentences, unlike older models. You don't need complex prompt formatting. Just write what you mean, like you'd say it. Second, this is not flux, so the CFG should be treated as active. This value controls how strictly the model follows your prompt. A higher value means it sticks more closely to what you've written. A lower value, like 2.5, gives the model more room to be creative, and it can also help with brightness issues in your output. Third, there's the image CFG scale. This controls how closely the model sticks to the input image. A higher value keeps more of the original detail. A lower value allows the model to make more significant creative changes. And finally, resolution. The previous High Dream model was optimized for 768 by 768, but the new model is a bit more dynamic. It supports various input image sizes, so you're not stuck with just one resolution anymore. So here's how we're gonna do this. First, I'm testing the model using the same exact images I used for Flux Context. Then, I'll show you how to set it up. And finally, we'll talk about the results. Let's kick things off with iterative editing. I'm starting with a line art drawing of a classic car. Same image I used in the Flux Context video. What I want to test is whether I actually need to go through the editing step by step, or if I can just drop everything into one big prompt and let Hydream handle it all at once. So instead of feeding Hydream three separate prompts, I gave it one combined prompt. Here's exactly what I used. Colorize this image and make the car a vintage red color. Add a serene countryside road as the background. Add a small fluffy white dog in the passenger seat. And no, it didn't give me everything in one go. So, just like with Flux Context, I'm switching to iterative editing, one step at a time. I'm starting with this. Colorize the image and make the car a vintage red color. That's it. The goal here is simple. I want to see how well Hydream builds on previous edits. Can it refine step by step? And the output looked fantastic. Now, in the previous test with Flux Context, I clicked the refresh button in the load image node to update the input with the edited image. But I realized Hydream is using the regular load image node, so I fixed that. I made sure the output image is now connected back in as the new input image. That way, we're not losing our progress between steps. Next, I gave this prompt, add a serene countryside road as the background, and this is where I started noticing something. This model takes your words very literally, according to the GitHub page. Hydream accepts straightforward instructions like convert the image into a Ghibli style, and prompt refinement is no longer required. Basically, what you type is what you get. So I tried again. I told it to add a serene countryside road in the background, but this time, the model changed the car's color to white. So you still basically have to tell it what to keep. I went back, reused the previous prompt, but lowered the CFG to 2.5 to let the model be a little more creative. That did the trick. So if you're looking for a more creative or natural feeling output, lowering the CFG can really help. If you need a precise edit, bump the CFG up. Just know that a lower CFG means the model might start changing parts of the image you wanted to keep, so you need to be more exact with your instructions when you lower it. All right, I refreshed the load image node again, loaded the most recent output, and gave it the final prompt. Add a small fluffy white dog in the passenger seat. This gave the model a little too much freedom. It added two dogs, so I increased the CFG back to three 
hoping that'd help it follow the prompt more closely. Still gave me two dogs. I rewrote the prompt to be more specific. Add one small fluffy white dog in the passenger seat of the car. Leave everything else the same. Still no good. Still, two dogs. Something's clearly off. We'll talk more about why that might be happening later. Anyway, here's the final output from High Dream. Red car, countryside road, dog in the seat. And just like before, here's what I got from Flux Context. Now, let's move on to local and precise object modification. The goal here is to make a targeted change without affecting anything else in the image. The image I used was a wide shot of a busy outdoor market with a big yellow fruit stand right in the center. My prompt was, change the yellow fruit stand to a vibrant blue color, but keep all the fruits on it the same. And it turned everything blue, not what I asked for. So I adjusted the prompt to this. Change the yellow fruit stand to a vibrant blue color. Don't change other parts. Still didn't follow the instruction. At this point, I was using the Q4 model, so I switched over to the Q5 version. One last try. Change the yellow fruit stand to a vibrant blue color. Don't change the colors of the fruits. Still nothing. Look, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not cherry picking results. And I'm not going to lie to you about what this model can and can't do. This is what Flux Context Q4 gave me. And this is what I got from High Dream Q5. Next, let's look at character consistency. The goal here is to see if the model can keep a character's identity consistent, even when you completely change the environment. I used this photorealistic portrait of an older woman. The prompt is, place this woman in a bustling futuristic city street at night, illuminated by neon lights, while preserving her exact facial features, hairstyle and expression. The woman looked okay. Her face was still there. But the environment, Definitely not a futuristic city street, more like a tunnel. So I lowered the CFG to 2.5, hoping it would give me a more creative take on the background. But instead, it made the woman younger, and the background wasn't much better. Then I changed the prompt to this. Change the image so that the woman is in a bustling futuristic city street at night. She should be illuminated by neon lights. That gave me better results, but it still wasn't quite there. And that's when I realized, this model likes prompts that are short, direct, and to the point. So from here on out, I'm keeping it concise. Here's what Flux Context gave me. And here's what Hydream produced. Next up, let's change the character's appearance. The goal here is to test simple changes to a character's features and accessories. So I'm using an image of a young man with short brown hair, wearing a plain gray t-shirt, looking serious. And the prompt is, Change his hair color to bright blue and add a pair of sleek, modern sunglasses. That's it. Can't get more straightforward than that. The expected result. The guy's supposed to have bright blue hair and sunglasses, and everything else, like his facial features and outfit, should stay exactly the same. And it kind of does that. Prompt adherence seems decent. But if this is supposed to be better than context, I'm still not seeing it. Anyway, here's the side-by-side. -side. Let's keep going. Now we're changing a character's position and activity. What I want to test here is the model's ability to change someone's pose and what they're doing without changing who they are or where they are. The input image is a woman standing casually by a window, looking out. The prompt I gave, make her sit in a cozy armchair reading a book, keeping her identity and the window view. The result, it did one thing better than context. It kept the window consistent but the woman totally different, not even close to the same person. So I updated the prompt. I added, keep the woman's features and clothing the same. And yeah, this looks way better now. Here's the side-by-side -side comparison again. All right, time to test transformation. I'm using the same grizzly bear I used in the context video. The input image is a grizzly bear standing on all fours in a forest clearing. The prompt is, Change this bear to be wearing cargo pants while sitting on a log and biting into a sandwich next to a beautiful alpine lake. This looks amazing. 
It's a little on the painterly side, but honestly, it's close. Only weird thing. That sandwich is comically huge. Anyway, here's the side-by-side -side comparison. Now, let's look at changing the background and environment. The objective here is to see if the model can cleanly replace the background without messing up the subject in the foreground. The image I'm using is a solitary figure standing in a vast, empty desert landscape. The prompt, change the background to a lush, dense jungle with exotic plants and dappled sunlight, keeping the person in the exact same position and pose. And this actually looks pretty good except for one thing. The dune is still there. And I have a feeling that I should have included foreground changes in the prompt. Here's the comparison. Next, we're changing time, season, and weather. So, this time, the input image is a picturesque park scene in autumn. Bright, colorful fall foliage. And the prompt is, change the season to a snowy winter day, with everything covered in fresh snow. The expected result is that the park layout stays the same, the structure, the objects, but now it looks like winter covered in snow. The result is not what I was hoping for. Still, here's the comparison. Let's move on to style preservation and transfer. The goal here is to apply an artistic style, something like an oil painting to a high quality photo, but keep the core structure and feel of the image. The image I'm using is a clean, high-res photo of a calm lake surrounded by mountains. The prompt, transform this image into an oil painting with visible brush strokes and thick paint texture. And yeah, it definitely looks painted. But, and there always seems to be a but, it's way too oversaturated. Still looks good, but it's just a bit too much. Here's the side-by-side -side with Flux Context and Hydream. Next, let's check out image text editing and manipulation. The point here is to see how well the model can remove, add, or change text within an image and still match the original style. I'm using a photo of a bakery storefront. There's a sign that says, Vesuvio Bakery. The prompt is, replace the text Vesuvio Bakery with sneaky robot bakeries on the sign, maintaining the same font and aesthetic. And it didn't do it. Not even close. I bumped the steps up to 30 just to give it more room to work. Still nothing. So here's the side-by-side -side comparison. And yeah, I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything. I'm gonna stop here. It's pretty clear. This model works some of the time, but it fails more often than not. And remember, this is the Q5 version of Hydream going up against the Q3 version of Flux Context. And what makes this even more interesting is that all of the Flux Context results were generated using just eight steps with the Turbo LoRa. All right, let's talk about how to install Hydream E1.1. And then I'll get into why I don't think it's actually better than Flux Context. First, you need to update Comfy, restart it, and drag the workflow into the workspace. Hydream is already natively supported in Comfy UI. Next, download the models. There are two types of Hydream models. One is the 32GB .safe tensors file, which is, let's be real, out of reach for most people. The other is the GGUF version, which is a bit more friendly for local GPUs. I downloaded both the Q4 and Q8 versions. Once you've got the model you want, place it inside your models. Diffusion Models folder. Now, Hydream uses Clip G and Clip L as its text encoders. Download those and place them in the models text encoder folder. Same with the Llama FP8 model. Download that and also place it in the models text encoder folder. The T5 and VAE models are the same ones used in Flux or Flux Context. If you don't already have them, download the T5 model and put it in the models text encoder folder. Then, download the VAE and place it in the models. VAE folder. Okay, so that's it. Just restart Comfy and you're good to go. So, what do I think of Hydream E1.1? It's not better than Flux Dev Context. And honestly, I don't even know where to start. First, it's slow. Like, really slow. Second, this one's both a pro and a con. The ability to mess with your CFG you can get really great results. 
but you have to tinker. And that takes time. And not everyone wants to spend that time tweaking settings for each prompt. Third, the prompting itself. According to the GitHub page, prompt understanding is supposed to be better, but I kept getting terrible results with both the Q4 and Q5 models. And look, when I used their example prompts, things did look better. And again, not always on first try. Image editing should be simple. You've got an image. You know exactly what you want changed and what you want to keep. And the model should give you that. And that's where context shines. You don't have to think about anything. Just image in and image out. Fourth, the size. This model suffers from the same issue as Omnigen. The base model is massive. 32 gigabytes is no joke. And yeah, maybe it's amazing at that size. But most people just don't have that kind of GPU headroom. And the last thing, I ran all of this against Flux Context Q3 with Turbo LoRa using just eight steps. And Context almost always came out on top. So is this the best image editing model? Yes and no. If you've got 40 gigabytes of VRAM just sitting around, then maybe. But honestly, the average Joe with poor GPUs, like you and me, will probably never know. HiDream E1.1 is one of the most inconsistent models I've ever used. Okay, at least the quantized versions. And I know you're gonna say, but this person said it's better than context. Like I said, the 32 gigabyte version. And maybe if you're lucky, the Q8 version. None of the images you saw in this video were cherry-picked. What you saw is what I got on each try. If you've got a beefy GPU, definitely give it a shot and let us know if your results are better. There are a few things this model is good at. Style transfer, colorizing images, object removal. And if that's all image editing was about, Adobe wouldn't exist. Thanks for watching. Especially if you stuck with me through that little mini rant. Please like and subscribe for more honest guides. And remember, not everything new is better. This is Sneaky Robot. See you next time.